So it's finally time to rock and roll. So what is rolling? Rolling is basically the phenomenon you observe when you see something, you know, circular or spherical like this, moving on a flat surface like this, right? And this is also probably the phenomenon that gave birth to what is arguably mankind's greatest invention of all time, the wheel. But when you look at it closely, you'll see that it's a simple example of a rigid body performing rotation about a moving axis, right? Because, see, if you were in a frame that is at rest with respect to the center mass of this ball, you'll see that it's rotating about the center mass. And if you observe this from the ground frame, you'll see that the center mass is moving like this. So this is just rotation about an axis that's moving. But this is a special case because there is a peculiar relationship between the angle velocity of rotation around the center of mass and the velocity of the center of mass with respect to the ground. So let's try to derive that. So now, let's do a thought experiment. Let's say I have a cylinder of radius r. And also I have a sheet of paper underneath it, such that it has some sort of glue on top of it. Okay? Now, let's say that this, this cylinder I can rotate about the center. But what would happen if I rotate the cylinder by an angle theta? It would pull the sheet of paper like this, right? What would be the length of the sheet of paper that gets stuck on to the cylinder? It would be that distance, right? That length, which is nothing but r into theta. Okay? Now, let's take a slightly different case. So let's say I have the same cylinder, but instead of having a sheet of paper with some sort of glue on top of it, uh, I have a sheet of paper that has some sort of friction between the paper and the cylinder, right? That is, uh, as this cylinder rotates, it sort of pulls the paper like this, okay? Now, what would happen if I rotate the cylinder by an angle theta again? So, it would pull the sheet of paper in this direction. What would be the length of this sheet of paper over here that gets pulled? Again, just like the previous case, it should be equal to r into theta, right? Now let's come back to the first case. So let's say I rotate the cylinder by an angle 2 pi. Basically one full rotation. What would be the length of the sheet of paper that gets stuck to the cylinder? It should be equal to the circumference of the base of the cylinder, right? Which is 2 pi r, okay? Now similarly in the second case, if I rotated the cylinder by an angle 2 pi, what would be the length of the sheet of paper that gets pulled in this direction? It should be 2 pi r again. Okay? Now comes the beautiful part. Let's say that you're in a frame of reference that is at rest with respect to a point on the sheet of paper. What would you see then? So what would happen if I rotate the cylinder through an angle theta but viewed it from this frame? Now, the cylinder or the central mass of the cylinder will move toward the point, right? But through what distance? For that, let's go back to the cylinder frame. So we saw that when I rotated the cylinder through an angle theta, the sheet of paper got pulled right through a distance of r theta. So which means that this point on the sheet of paper would also have moved a distance of r theta in this direction. So that means if I come back to this frame, the frame which is at rest with respect to this point, the center of mass of the cylinder would move in this direction through a distance of r theta. But wait, viewing this from this frame is exactly equivalent to viewing a cylinder that's rolling on a flat surface, right? So let's say I had a cylinder that's rolling on a flat surface. Then if I viewed it from a frame that's at rest with respect to the center of mass, and let's say it rotated through an angle theta in that frame, then the distance moved by the central mass from the ground frame will be equal to r into theta. Now let's say that the distance moved by the cylinder from the ground frame is equal to xcm. Then we get xcm equals r into theta. Okay? But now, if I divide both sides by time taken, I get xcm by t equals r theta by t. Now what is xcm by t? It's nothing but the speed of the center mass measured from the ground frame. Okay? 
And similarly, what is theta by t? Theta by t is the angular speed of rotation around the center of mass. Let's call it omega. So what I get is that Vcm is equal to r omega. Finally, I understand why Vcm equals r omega in the case of rolling. So this kind of rolling where Vcm equals omega r is called pure rolling. So now that we know this, let's see the kind of results we get because of this. Firstly, let's look at the kinetic energy of rolling. Now we know rolling is just a simple example of a body doing rotation about a moving axis, right? Or you can say rotation plus translation. So in these cases, we know that the kinetic energy can be split into kinetic energy of rotation plus kinetic energy of translation. Now what is kinetic energy of translation in this case? It will be half m into Vcm squared. Similarly, what is kinetic energy of rotation? It would be half i into omega squared. Fine. But the only difference in this case will be that there is a relationship between omega and Vcm, which is Vcm equals omega r. So if you use that relationship in this relationship, you can find the overall kinetic energy of a body. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.